Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AmityTutors.com and welcome to this video on Gibbs Free Energy Change and this is the second video. So in this video we're going to look at another example uh, calculation uh, using Gibbs um, Free Energy Equation. Uh, but this time we're going to look at the, uh, the calculation that asks you to work out the minimum temperature required for a reaction to be just feasible. Uh, I'm going to go through a worked example, like I say, in this video. So, just a quick reminder, though. Um, remember, for uh, Gibbs free energy, for a reaction to be spontaneous, then delta G has to be zero or negative. Now, for a reaction to be just feasible, uh, the value of delta G has to be zero. And I'll come on to that in a minute as well. But just to remind you of the equation, uh, Gibbs free equation, this is delta G equals delta H minus T delta S, where delta H is the enthalpy change in kilojoules per mole. Um, the uh, temperature is always in Kelvin, and delta S is always in joules per Kelvin per mole. And the units are really, really important here, as you'll, when we do the calculation, you'll see why it's really important to make sure you know what the units are. Okay, so when we do these calculations, like I say, we're going to work out the minimum temperature at which a reaction becomes feasible. We need to know what the value of delta G will be if it's feasible. So when you're doing this, you have to assume that delta G equals zero. And when I do the calculations, uh, you'll see where that comes in as well. So let's get on to the example. So you can see that calculate the temperature at which a reaction becomes feasible. Now, I've decided to uh, go along with iron oxide. Now, this is um, obviously, hematite, this is what you would find and you would extract from the earth. Uh, you'd put it into a blast furnace, uh, heat it up with carbon, which is your reducing agent, or in this case, coke, uh, and uh, we're going to get iron and carbon monoxide as a product. So, this is something that happens on a daily basis to make steel uh, for, for construction industry, etc. Okay, so we've got the enthalpy value here. Uh, the enthalpy value is endothermic, it's plus 493 kilojoules per mole. Uh, and in the box there in blue, uh, which are these ones here, we've actually got entropy values. So these are entropy values of iron oxide, which is 90, iron is 27.2, carbon is 5.7, and carbon dioxide is 198. Now all of these are in joules per Kelvin per mole. This is the units of entropy. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to um, work out the entropy of the system. So the delta S bit is the entropy of the system only, not total entropy. So if you don't know how to calculate uh, entropy of the system, then I have done a video that looks into calculating uh, entropic, um, well, entropy of the system. So you just click the link below uh, and you can have a look at that first. But I'm going to assume that you know how to work this out. So we're going to... Um, do this equation and I'm going to write it in uh, green. So we're going to start with, uh, like I say, delta S of the system because we need to know this. We haven't been given this information, we've been given delta H, but we haven't been given delta S. So delta S of the system is your uh, product minus reactants. This is the total entropy of the product. So in this case, delta S of the system is going to be 2 times by, uh, which is I in 27.2. And we're going to add that to three lots of carbon monoxide, which is 198. Okay, and we're going to subtract that away from iron oxide, which is just 90. And we're going to subtract it from three lots of carbon, which is three times by 5.7. Okay, so if we do this side here, this equation here on the left here first, then we should get a value of 648.5. Four. There you go. And then uh, if we look on this side and we add them up, then we should get a value of 107.1. Now, if you put that into your calculator, um, you should get a number that uh, about a number for delta S uh, of the system, uh, and that should equal plus 541.3. Uh, and this is uh, joules per Kelvin per mole. Go. Okay, so this is the value of the entropy, which is the delta S. Now, remember we said for a reaction to be feasible, uh, we assume that delta G equals zero, because that's when it's just feasible. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to write out this bit. So delta G 
will equal zero when a reaction is feasible. So effectively, this means that zero will equal delta H minus T delta S. So if we rearrange this equation to work out temperature, which is over here, so temperature, uh, that will equal delta H over delta S. Because remember, our delta G is not there anymore because it holds the value of zero. So temperature is delta H over delta S. Uh, and therefore, we're going to put our values in here. So our values are going to be 493, which is the value of delta H, which is over there. So we're going to put in 493. This is going to be multiplied uh, by 1,000. Because remember, this value here is in kilojoules per mole. Uh, and our entropy values in joules. So we have to convert, and this is really important, you must convert the kilojoules into joules per mole uh, to make sure you get the right value for the um, temperature. Okay, so it's 493 times by 10 to the 3, which just means multiplied by 1,000. And we're going to divide that by the entropy, and the entropy here is 541.3, and that's joules per Kelvin per mole. Uh, it's really important because the Kelvin part is next to the joules, so we have to convert that to joules. And if we get our uh, calculator out and put these numbers in, then we should get a value of 910.8 Kelvin. Now, this seems sensible because obviously we know that a blast furnace, you need a lot of heat to get this reaction to go. Uh, and 910 is actually the uh, minimum temperature that's required um, for this uh, reaction to become feasible. So make sure you look at your value, make sure it looks sensible. If it looks ridiculous, so for example, that was something like 50, for example, you know that your blast furnace is not going to operate at 50 Kelvin. So make sure you uh, look at the number, make sure it's sensible as well. Um, and this could be really useful actually for industry because if you're making uh, iron for this, you need to know the minimum temperature just to get the reaction going. And you want to try and get as close to that temperature as possible. Now, obviously, there is other factors. For example, heat may escape from the furnace, so you might need to increase the temperature more than this. But in industry, you don't want to heat it too much, more than you need to, because that could cost a lot of money. So this equation is incredibly useful to work out um, the minimum temperature and could save a lot of money industrially as well. But um, that's it. Hope that helps. Bye.